Welcome to SEC Network Basketball presented by Regions. We are in the Music City tonight. Vanderbilt is welcoming in a top 15 team and the defending national champion, the LSU Tigers, on the road tonight to face the Commodores. And we're excited to be with you, Courtney Lau, alongside the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Peck. LSU gets the tip. Haley Van Lith swinging it over to Michaela Williams. And Vanderbilt's going to play a man-to-man. -man. They're going to kind of zone it, keeping each LSU player in front of her to put them in good rebounding position. And that right there, you see it. Vanderbilt starting five. Now a different starting five lineup because we're seeing Camille Pierre, the true freshman in the starting lineup. And this freshman is special. Camille Pierre, number 12 in white, posting up down low. Why the change? Why is that an advantage for Vanderbilt? Well, what Shay Ralph is looking for is how she can use her bench more. So starting the freshman early and then get rotation so she can have rested bodies, keep her starters fresh. Flage Johnson misses, but there is Angel Reese, the best backboard, if you will, in the country. Those offensive rebounds, get her. She is so like unpredictable of how she gets her hands in the area to rebound. If she doesn't grab the rebound, can tip it back in. She is first in the nation in offensive rebounds per game. Gets about 12 per contest. Some opponents that face LSU even talk about bringing two to try to box out Angel Reese. Anissa Morrow. She has been the extra piece in the paint that Angel Reese actually helped recruit on her visit. She said, you've got to come to LSU. We need you. Camille Pierre, a little too much on the jumper. That's what Vanderbilt's got to do. they got to rebound the ball. Jordan Cambridge with the shot. She's back from injury this year, shooting it more confidently from the outside. And if you can't get inspiration from anybody in the game, you get it from Jordan Cambridge. With, with all, what all she's been through, through her injuries, this is her sixth season at Vanderbilt. Yeah, at Vanderbilt. She has stayed her whole career through it all with the Commodores. Tipped up in the air by Morrow, and she saves it. LSU gets it back. Van Lith underneath. Angel Reese going up, and she draws the foul. Aga Makarot is in the game now. Bring some more size on the floor for Vanderbilt to try to help them with the rebounding. That's number 24 in white for Vanderbilt, the true freshman out of Poland. Angel Reese gets both free throws. And Vanderbilt's got to find its offense. they got to make shots. That's a two for Mayana Moore. And finally, Vandy is on the board. But you saw better spacing that time, a balance of the floor. That's what they've got to do, and then make those perimeter shots. Flage Johnson. Big foe. All the way to the rack. She has come along. She's had to really pick up a lot of the slack. The loss of Alexis Morris from last season. Aga Makara in the corner misses. What did LSU lose when Alexis Morris graduated? Uh, well, one is quickness defensively, and then on the offensive end, just announced today she's Alexis Morris is signed with the Harlem Globetrotters. The show. The show is what she'll be known as. Hey, and she put on a show when she was wearing the purple and gold. All the way to a national championship. Michaela Williams, the freshman on the baseline. Boy, she's special. She can score at three levels. That mid-range is pure. Candidate for SEC Freshman of the Year? Oh, absolutely. Cambridge misses. Haley Van Lith off and running. She's got numbers with her. Puts it up, go to the free throw line. First foul on Ayanna Moore. Kim Mulkey. Been challenging this team, she said, all season. She said, I know what we have offensively. It's been the defensive side that's needed to improve. And we saw that against Florida. Well, after the loss at Mississippi State, they took two days off. And then she had a team meeting. And she had, instead of it coaches to players, she had it with the players but had it as if it was a staff meeting. So she let them be brutally honest, coach themselves on what they needed to improve on. And the biggest area of improvement I've seen is on the defensive side. They are aggressive on the ball. 
Now, coming off that win over Florida, they put up 106 points, only allowed 66. The 106 was an LSU record against an SEC team. Flaje Johnson with the steal, the spin, the bucket, big foe in the house. And Vanderbilt's going to call timeout. And we are early on in this game. It's an 8-0 run for LSU. You know, Haley Van Lith was telling us if there were a defensive breakdown in the past. Oh, Angel with the swat. But there would be a drop in the shoulders, a disappointment. Now it is, okay, if you made a mistake, I've got your back. Look, on the drive, okay, Flage got beat, but you know who was there? Angel Reese. There are a lot of personalities on this LSU team, and it took some time for them to get to know each other and build that trust because, remember, you only have two starters returning from the national championship team. And it takes a while to adjust and understand. you got to bring it every single day. Ayanna Moore trying to drive in, goes high up off the window. Well, what I have seen from Vanderbilt already, Shay Ralph, rotations, new players coming on the floor. She's trusting her team. LSU just got its fifth offensive rebound of this game. Flaje Johnson in the corner, overshoots. We'll call it a pass to Anissa Morrow. Pierre goes up, draws the foul to the free throw line. And Pierre misses the first. We're featuring the second game at 3.30. Auburn and Florida. Michaela Williams bouncing around. Angel Reese under the basket. You know she's going to be there. Angel Reese shoots more free throws than anyone in the country. Because when she gets the rebound, you can't do much but foul her because she's going back up with it. She already has eight rebounds. We are in the first quarter. Oh, my goodness. And Morrow swipes it. Well, Vanderbilt was patient on that possession and then getting that second chance opportunity. So they're they're finding ways to get the shots. Now they gotta slow down a little bit before they pull the trigger. Last tier, Pola taking it in. That was the improvement that I saw in the Florida game. So how can you help that? Ball screen action, make two, guard one, and then ball movement out of that. We're going to have Angel Reese post up. And double foul. So that's the second on Angel Reese and the second on Jordan Oliver. That gives the ball back to Vanderbilt for the last seven seconds. So that's big. That's two fouls on Angel Reese. Ayanna Moore. Shot blocked. But LSU was dominant in that first quarter. They scored on 10 of their 20 possessions. Meanwhile, Vandy only scored on four of its 20 possessions. Well, and Vanderbilt was one of six in the paint. And Angel Reese had a lot to do with that. But now you've got Del Rosario, number 23 in purple. That's 6'6 six, six inside. And Issa Morrow misses. Sasha Washington with the rebound. Vanderbilt hasn't had a field goal in almost five minutes. Camille Pierre misses. Oh, Morrow wide open on the roll. Good rotation and help by Sasha Washington. And Flaget lost it. Vanderbilt 0 for its last eight. Washington driving, kicking to Ayanna Moore. Vanderbilt just needs to see one go in. And that could be it. Camille Pierre with the second chance opportunity. That's the first second chance points for Vandy.
St. Ralph has already gone nine deep with her Vanderbilt team. Actively trying to spread out those minutes and help her team's fatigue late in games. Good connection, Cambridge to Sasha Washington. And Lift finds Morrow. Morrow's double teamed. Bella Lachance almost had it. 10 seconds here for LSU. Flage, no. But LSU's going to get it back. Haley Van Lith, yes! First three pointer of the game for either team. That's the confidence that you're used to seeing from Haley Van Lith. Swiped it in the middle of the air. Anisa Morrow up and in. She is so tough. Anissa Morrow, her versatility of playing in the post, but she can handle the basketball. She can shoot the three. And she's just a junior. 13 points away from 2,000 in her career. Sasha Washington now four points. Kim Humphrey was not happy about that one. Van Lith will take it. Kim was telling us this is her second time ever coaching in this gym. Well, you know, I played here and I loved it. Well, yeah, but you played, you were used to it. Well, when I was on the opposite end from my coach and I screwed up, I didn't have to look at it. <laughs> but I tell you, this could be an advantage for Haley Van Lith because she can play freer because she wants to please Kim Mulkey. Passat looking for two. Yes. Passat came, she came into to Tennessee known as just a three-point shooter. When she transferred to Vanderbilt, she has really worked hard at going off the bounce. Well, coming into this game, she had missed her last seven two-point attempts. So you saw one go through there. That ends that streak. This puts Janae Kent at the free throw line, the freshman out of Illinois. She was her, her school's all-time leading scorer, girls or boys in high school. And this is the first. This Vanderbilt Commodore team and Texas A&M. That game will be in College Station. Texas A&M getting a win tonight over Ole Miss, 72 to 53. Wow. And advantage is shooting 21% now from the field. Oh, Anissa Morrow. She has been all over the passing lanes tonight. It gets a little bounce. Too. Now, can they convert on this end? Cambridge stepping into it. No. Well, that was a wide open three, right? So you want Cambridge to take that, but she's just got to set her feet and line up. And she has shot the ball from three a lot better this season than she has her previous career. Yeah, 12 percentage points higher this season than compared to her last. Alia Del Rosario, the true freshman center at the free throw line. It's only a 10 to 8 advantage here in the second quarter. And a big part of that is, again, Angel Reese is on the bench. Did you see the defense of LSU? They're getting through screens or they're chasing the same path as the shooter that's coming off. Nothing easy for Vanderbilt. Del Rosario saves it over to Michaela Williams. Here she comes. Mm. That crossover, boom. Not scoring for the last four plus minutes from the field. Pierre for two. I like that shot. Yeah. Van Litt, the dump off to Del Rosario. Her confidence, her conditioning, so much improved. And look, when you play Vanderbilt, no safe is, no lead is safe the way they can shoot the three ball. Finally, a three goes in. Vanderbilt one for 18 from three. There's about a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Feeding Del Rosario. Camille Pierre with the block. And a little stand down. Just a little bit. Just a little peek after, yeah. after the block. <laughs> 
because she was buried. Pierre was. They got a piece of that one. Flage around her defender. She makes that look easy. Eight points for Flage. And LSU up at the half. And Jordan Cambridge, she's made 37 threes in this season. Her three-point percentage had improved. She's just got to be able to connect. Just see one go through the hoop. And Jordan Cambridge, number three in white, is Vanderbilt's leading scorer, and she is 0 for 9 from the field. Jordan Oliver. And she throws it away. And that's on Sasha Washington. That's her third foul. Yeah, Shea Ralph's got to make some, a decision right now. And she is. And Justine Passat checking yeah. in. Now, the slot goes in the game for Vanderbilt. They could go a four-out, even a five-out offense and spread the floor. Look for backdoor opportunities. Ayanna Moore shot swatted away by Flage Johnson. Ayanna Moore, she was in foul trouble, too, and she only played nine minutes in the first half. So she's got to... She's got to be willing to take the shot. As soon as she catches the ball, her eyes have to immediately go to the rim. Number 23 in white for Vanderbilt. She's got to be ready to pull the trigger. Anissa Morrow going up against Pierre. Got second life. Third life. Third chance point. I don't know if that's a thing, but it is for LSU. <laughs> 21 second chance points. LSU averages 16 second chance points a game, so they're well past that. And you're going to count that for Ayanna Moore. Ayanna Moore coming into this game. Last five games averaging 15.6 points per game. So St. Ralph has this program moving in the right direction. Now compared to last year when they only won 12 games, only three games in SEC play. Now they dealt with a lot of injuries. Ayanna Moore was hurt and Jordan Cambridge was hurt. Two main players. That's two big losses. So that's the second on Flage Johnson. Up and in for Ayanna Moore. In sixth ranked Florida hosting number 13 Arkansas will wrap up the night with number seven Alabama and number 14 Auburn. What a great gymnastics lineup. And if you notice by all the numbers next to those names, the SEC, Pretty they strong. Are, they're lit when it comes to That's gymnastics. Right. Peck's a big gymnastics fan. I just can't do the uneven bars. Yeah, 6-4 might get in the way. <laughs> LSU's offensive strategy is they're going to come right at you mm -hmm. in the paint. Going to attack the rim. Going to keep the pressure on you every possession. She said we cannot back down. We can't be afraid ever against LSU. Well, the swagger that you have when you're the reigning national champions. Bissat misses. Anissa Morrow up ahead to Haley Van Lith. Oh, Stolen away by Jordan Cambridge. She's second in the nation in steals, and those are her first points. Flage, smooth. Uh, that was just a very easy press break right there. Look, there's no quit in Jordan Cambridge. That's going to be Vanderbilt ball. The Saucer Washington told us she is the biggest dog on the team. Talking about Jordan Cambridge. Look, it's a physical thing that you see the battle in the paint, the battle on the court. But it's also, it's emotional toughness. It's mental toughness. That's a big part of 
playing in the SEC. And if anybody knows about that, that is Shea Rouse. Oh, yes, After is. the career that she had, played through injuries at Connecticut. Wow! Okay, Flage. 12 for Flage. LSU up 20. Ryan Allen buries it. She has hit both of the threes tonight for Vanderbilt, but LSU is going to answer on the other end with Michaela Williams. And those perimeter jumpers. This is dangerous. LSU is second in the nation in points per game. Jordan Cambridge. Ooh, I thought Van Lip yeah. traveled. That one hops out on Angel Reese, and she is fouled back to the free throw line for Angel Reese, who's got her double-double with 10 points, 10 rebounds. It's her 14th double-double of the season. She'll miss the first free throw. Jada Brown for three. Kayla Williams under pressure, finds Van Lip for three, no. Ayanna Moore pushing, hitting Cambridge in stride. And Vanderbilt keeps chipping away. Her second home, if you will. She's five of six from the free throw line. Again, takes more free throws than anyone in the nation. 13 points, 12 total rebounds. Look, she's the Gary Pat Payton, the glove defensively <laughs> Alexis Morris was, and now Flaje Johnson has had to take on that role. Stolen away by Angel Reese. We're going to down the floor. Haley Van Lith will stop and pop and miss. Cambridge going to push the other way. And that's going to be the third foul on Angel Reese at 43 to 20. Vanderbilt has gone on a 19 to 10 run. This is where Vanderbilt can chip into that lead. One and two for Brown. LSU has not had a field goal in almost four minutes. So she is subbed out. Remember, last year they did not have an option of rotating through players because they had so many injuries. Their bench was very limited. And now this season, Shea Ralph has a healthier team. The three from Ryan Allen in and out. That was halfway down. Ben Lith. The lane was huge to the basket. And that ends a four-minute drought without a field goal. Yeah, the backdoor cut because the pressure as Vanderbilt's getting closer, the pressure extended. Now LSU should probably hold this. Use the full clock. About a nine second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Go with a high ball screen here, getting to a high-low action. Angel Reese patting the stats, the huh? rebound, the putback. I don't know what you're going to do with that. 15 points, 14 boards for Angel Reese. And these are two black women who had played here at Vanderbilt. And they're, they're two of the reasons why I chose to play here at Vanderbilt. That is so cool. And then, of course, 
As we all know, Carolyn Peck went on to be the first black female head coach to win a national championship. You know, Vanderbilt is a program that has been to a Final Four. And that's where Shea Ralph is trying to get this team. That is terrific backdoor cut by last year Poa. We saw the intensity and the fight from Vanderbilt in that third quarter, but LSU able to end that third quarter on a 7-1 to one run. They're back up by 20. The offense has been what's struggling tonight for Vanderbilt. The defense, though, Shea Ralph has, has got to, for the most part, be pleased with. I mean, this is a LSU team that's got so many weapons. Corner pocket, Michaela Williams. Michaela Williams has not looked like a freshman since she stepped on campus. That's a two for Ayanna Moore. Oh, she blew a kiss after that one. Stay confident, compete. I don't mind it. Makaraha takes it away from Williams. She'll get it back for the two. Yes. They may be down 18, but they are competing like this is a one point game. Is it, you know, when you're building a program, you can't look at a final score. You've got wins within what you're trying to accomplish, the goals that you have set for your team. Haley Van Lith on the move, and one of their major goal this year, get back to the NCAA tournament. They have not been there since 2014. It's Ayanna Mitchell on the other end for Vandy. For what the potential is for them to do, and when you look at what LSU as a four seed They'd like to creep up to that third seed, you know, even knock on the door of a two seed, the better seeding. Look, you got to win six games if you can get in the tournament. Ayanna Moore got her shot going. She has 15 points now. And today, LSU has been able to go eight deep with their bench. Kim Mulkey's been looking for that seventh and eighth player. But we're seeing this whole LSU team grow and evolve together this season. And Kim Mulkey has said in their four losses, they've all been different. And they've learned something from each of those. That, that's been the key, is that, yeah, you took the loss, but did you learn from it? Well, she said in that South Carolina game, she said they're not far off. They are in that category. Flaze Johnson back at the free throw line. Then go all access with the Missouri women's basketball program. Never before seen footage and sounds from players and coaches. The most dangerous player on the floor is the last one that passed it. You can't forget about the inbounder. Van Lith, Van Lith took advantage. And she's got 12. I see a difference in Van Lith. I saw it in the Florida game. I see it in this one. The confidence on the floor. Not a question mark of trying to figure out that point guard spot. Now she told us she had free-flowing energy in the Florida game. you got to go and play. And I think that really has freed up Van Lith to go play her game. It was an All-American honorable mention there. And then came to LSU having to play a new position at the point. In transition, Flage can't finish, but she will go to the free throw line. Going to the offensive glass. I think Flage, if LSU 
is going to look to contend or try to go back to back for a national championship. And she was big in the final four, right? You remember how Alexis Morris played on the left hand of Caitlin Clark? I mean, that's kind of you, the maturity of understanding and following the scouting report to how to defend opponents. Flaje Johnson was the SEC freshman of the year last year. In the game last year, where Angel Reese blocked the shot holding her shoe. <laughs> that was one of the most unique things I saw last season. And it did not, it was, she did not skip a beat no, either. Doesn't need it. With the energy that she brings on the floor, I'd find a spot. And just the competitiveness, oh, that yeah. mentality. We've seen it the last two seasons. And because she's got tremendous handles, she can pass the basketball. I think the question is, you know, how consistent a perimeter shot will she have? And I think that's something that really shows an upside, something she can develop. Everybody for LSU rebounding that basketball. And see, and they don't quit on a play. You miss a shot, you get back in there and rebound. Del Rosario up and in. Did she get the too small sign? Ooh. I got more in the lane, and Flaje Johnson fouls her from behind. LSU and South Carolina meet I mean, again. That's everybody wants to see that again, right? I, I, I do. That was the best game of the year so far. That was a that was a great game. 1.6 million people watched it and thought so. <laughs> <laughs> And how different is that game if Angel Reese doesn't foul out with four minutes to go? Haley Van Lint. Angel Reese takes a seat with 15 points, 16 rebounds. Well, I think that Vanderbilt demonstrated if that team for LSU that Kim Mulkey was looking for didn't show up, this could have been a long night. You, you just can't even know how it warms my heart, the support for women's basketball. And coming in, I don't care if it's LSU that's come to town. They have come out to watch women's basketball. And I think that's something we're going to see from Vanderbilt. You want to go get some spicy food with me? Yeah, after the game. I want to see if Taylor Swift makes it. We got to the Super Bowl. To the Super Bowl. People in Arizona started talking that she, <laughs> so she played soccer. Yeah, she's like, okay, soccer. You, she loves the, the, the sport of soccer, and I think that that's really helped her with her feet, her footwork on the basketball court. <laughs> Janae Kim. Is going to the free throw line to complete the end lead three point play. She just got to get comfortable playing at the college level and plays like that show growth. Now trending, moving in the direction that Kim Mulkey wants her team to evolve in. Mucker up for three. If you're going to try to Go back to back for a national championship. Yeah, if you've got scores, that's good, but you've got to be able to defend. And we're seeing progress there for LSU. Oh, no doubt. And it's not one or two players, it's every player that has stepped on the floor in purple. Angelica Velez at the buzzer. And LSU's bench lost it. <laughs> you love it when you see a player that doesn't get a lot of minutes, able to get a bucket, and the team is celebrating number one in purple. LSU 